Dealing with people who have a jealous, envious spirit can be very dangerous. But when you recognize it for what it is, you can use that to your advantage to help you and motivate you in life. Yes, use jealous, envious people to motivate you in your level up. As you develop and as you grow, you will attract people who are not going to like you. They're going to be jealous. They're going to be envious. They're going to do any little toxic thing they can do to try to distract you from your purpose. And if you are not mentally and spiritually prepared for this, you will allow them to discourage you and distract you. But once you become spiritually aware of how jealousy and envy is a wicked, toxic trait of a person who is miserable in their life and they feel like they can't do anything and thus they're threatened by you, you will no longer allow them to discourage you. You will allow them to encourage you no matter how weird and twisted it might be. Jealous people are actually encouraging you. You see, they see something in you that you might not even see in yourself. Many of us, we have this, it's just me spirit. It's just me, you know, who am I? That kind of thing. You might think that you're not that significant. You might think, you know, what am I saying? I'm not saying anything different than anybody else. I'm not doing anything different than anybody else. But to a hater and a jealous person, they will see what you do as some kind of glamorous, unrealistic, I can't believe she's doing this kind of thing. And because of that, they will envy and be jealous of you. And when you recognize that behavior in them, instead of allowing them to get under your skin and to distract you and to stop you from doing the thing that you're doing or being the type of person and the kind of woman that you are, you can use that as encouragement. You can use that to boost your self-confidence. To me, when I hear or see little traits of people being jealous of me or envious or, you know, acting like they say some kind of way, some type of way, I don't allow that to make me feel like, oh, why are they acting like that? Because honestly, when you have enough self-confidence and you have enough self-assuredness and you know who you are in God, that's the way I see it. You don't allow what other people say about you, be it negative or positive to discourage you and distract you from what you know you are supposed to be doing and how you know you're supposed to be living. So you can actually use that as motivation to keep going. The thought and the idea that somebody thinks so much of me to hate on me, it's just little old me. And yet you're giving me this toxicity. You're giving me this attitude. You're giving me this negativity for no reason. I've been nothing but kind to you. I've been a, a you know encouraging person in your life. I'm always available for you. And yet you act like I've done something to you. This is just the kind of rhetoric that you might deal with when you're dealing with a toxic, jealous person. They might see you doing well and they use every opportunity to try to say something or do something to distract you. But instead of you looking at it that way, you can look at it as, well, I am doing great apparently because if I wasn't doing great, they wouldn't be coming at me so hard. I am spiritual. So the way I see it is that the harder the enemy attacks you, the better off you are doing in life because the enemy is not coming for anybody that's not already on his team. And I'm not preaching because I don't do that, but the enemy does not come against anybody who is not already on his team. So when you are already doing something or you're doing something or trying to pursue something that is better for yourself and for your life, absolutely the enemy is going to throw little darts and send people your way to try to distract you and discourage you. And when you recognize it for what it is, you can use those people to motivate you to keep going. Don't allow what they say and what they think because you ever notice people who do the least always have the most to say. People who are not aspiring to do anything in life, they have so much critique and so many opinions about other people who have the boldness and the faith to do the things that they would not do. Once again, you have to look at that on the flip side as that is very inspiring and encouraging for you. And I'm telling you, I know from experience, being the kind of person who used to be overly humble, there's nothing wrong with being humble. As I said before, God wants us to be humble. If you're a believer, 
God wants us to be humble. But that over humility is not having a standard, not having boundaries, thinking you got to go along to get along, thinking that as long as you just don't rock the boat with anybody and make sure everybody's okay, even though you're not okay, that everything will be fine. That type of humility. That's not humility. That's being gullible. When you don't recognize people for who and what they are, and you're just trying to keep the peace by all means, just let them say what they want to say. I'm not worrying about it. Don't do this. Don't do that. I don't want to have no altercations. No, 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 no. That's not humility. That is gullibility. I believe that's a word, I hope. Or gullibleness. You know what I mean. That's being gullible. So being humble is understanding and knowing that you're blessed, but you don't have to act like you're nothing. And I think this is where many of us, and I'm going to stick with the spiritual people for a moment. That's where a lot of us mess it up because we use humility as a way of allowing people to take advantage of us and get over on us. And we confuse that with being humble. And actually, that's just being gullible. That's being naive. It's not okay for somebody to mistreat you. Even if you have the love of God on the inside of your heart, it's never okay for somebody to mistreat you. And you don't have to deal with it. And I can hear somebody now, it's like it popped in my mind. The scripture words are saying about, you know, God said if, you know, if they slap you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. Yeah, but he also said that we have to avoid those things, abstain from forms of evil. And I promise you, this wasn't meant to be a preachy message, but it's like if you recognize things, and this is where the recognizing comes in. When you recognize jealous, wicked, envious spirits, you know how to act accordingly. So as I was saying, you can use those people as motivation to do better in your life. You thought that you're not that smart. And yet you have people at your job who are hating on you because you seem to be doing a lot well and have favor from your employers or from the employees, the other employees, people like you. But you thought in your mind, hey, I'm just another employee. And turns out a lot of people love you so much so that now you have this little group of people, this little clique. They're saying little things. Oh, she always dressed up. Why is she always dressed up for? I can't stand that. If you work in a corporate environment, why would you not want to be dressed up? Why would you not want to look cute for work? I just don't get that. But my point of saying this is that the better you do, the more you will have people talking about you and you will have to get accustomed to that. And the major thing you must do though, with the spirit of jealousy and envy, when you're dealing with that, if you don't recognize that for what it is, it can be very dangerous to you. Even when you recognize it, it can be dangerous. But when you recognize that spirit of jealousy and envy in somebody, you can use them to your advantage and not allow them to overtake you. You can allow that to say to yourself, well, hey, I must be doing like this because they're treating me this way. Like, I didn't know I was that important. Like, it's just me. I didn't know I was that important for people to have a whole discussion about me about little old me. So I really think it's all in our perception of how we see the people who are jealous and envious toward us. I'm not saying you tolerate that spirit. I'm not saying you entertain it. Don't invite it into your life. If you can get away from people who are jealous and envious, you do that. But let's be real. There are some circumstances where for a time, you might have to deal with it, i.e. the workplace. If you're in school, if you're in college, or you're in any kind of training, you might have people around you that are haters. And for a season, you have to deal with that because you're getting your money, you're getting your degree, whatever it might be. You know, Sometimes you can't just up and run. How I wish the world worked that way, but sometimes you do have to endure things for a little bit. And when you do that, you have to know how to manage the people who try to manage you. Don't let jealous, envious people have, the, don't have them thinking that they have something over on you because a jealous, envious, toxic spirit, they want control. They want you to believe and they want you to feel that their toxic, jealous venom is so strong that it can stop you in your tracks from pursuing what you're pursuing or becoming who you're becoming. They want their comments and their negative uh, energy and the way they carry themselves to rub off on you. But when you see how they act and despite how they act, you continue to level up. 
that's when they become ineffective in your life and they do nothing but boost your confidence. If you use jealous people to your advantage, they will boost your confidence and they will boost your favor in the eyes of other people. They don't know it, but when somebody hates on another person, you're not doing anything except for drawing people to that person that you're hating on and causing other people to feel bad for that person. They want to be there for them. They want to show favor toward them. It's actually having the opposite effect of what a jealous, hating person wants to happen. So that's another reason why, you know, jealous people are not that smart. They don't understand that for every dart they throw at someone who is actually doing the right thing in life and who isn't bothering anybody and is truly genuine, God will send a whole army of people around that person to support them. Like God will send people around that individual and give them a tribe of people that will be there so much so that they don't even have to say a word. Like they have people on their side. Like jealous, envious people don't understand that. Like people who are doing well in their lives, people who truly know who they are, they don't care about what jealous, envious people say. They're aware of it, but they don't let them stop them from doing and being who they're supposed to be. And what'll happen is that the influence of the person that other people are going against becomes so great where that jealous person has no choice but to shut up and go about their way. When you can withstand it, when you can endure it, it takes a lot of prayer. I'm talking to myself. I'm speaking on what I have done. It takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of meditation. It takes a lot of self-development and really knowing what I want to do in life and who I want to be and how I want to live. It takes a lot of shifting my focus from what people are doing and to more of what I'm doing. You will never be, over, be able to overcome a jealous spirit if you're constantly focused on what other people are doing in their lives yourself. You see, if somebody's coming against you and they're negative and you're constantly in a retaliatory way of being, you're always thinking about how you can get back at this person, how you can show them this and do this, and I'm going to get back at them for treating me this way. You will not be able to succeed in your life. When it comes to jealous, envious, miserable spirits, you cannot go up against that. You can use them to your advantage, but you can't fight against that. You can't win in the same way that they're winning. Don't become like them. Because retaliating against somebody who's jealous and envious and a hater, you're giving them exactly what they want. And what they want is your time and your attention. And your time and your life is too precious and valuable to focus on somebody who's going nowhere in life. And most people who are jealous and envious, either they're not going anywhere in life, they've already lost so much, or they feel that they will never get to where you are, hence the reason why they're all in your business. Okay, don't give them that kind of attention. Be aware of them, use them to your advantage, boost your confidence, boost up your impact off of them. Allow that to be your positive self-talk that, hey, I must be doing well. If this person I don't even know is looking at me like I'm somebody, I must be somebody. Thank you, Lord. Okay, and leave it at that, you know, but don't entertain those people and don't become bitter don't feel like you need to, you know, start a war with these people. Watch, she, oh, she don't know me. I'm the one. We don't do that. We don't do that. Feminine women do not do all of that. Trust me, I understand the urge. I don't get that urge anymore, thank God. But years ago, I was always plotting in my head, oh yeah, I know what I'm going to say the next time I see her, next time I see him, I already know. I'm going to let them know. Don't let them know nothing. They don't need to know. They will know. When you're living a peaceful, quiet, successful life, not bothering anybody, smile on your face, living your life, not asking them for nothing, they will see that their jealousy had no impact on you, their venom and negativity had no impact on you. And if you are a spiritual person, which I hope you are, because your security is so rooted in who God says you are, Nothing they say can really penetrate your heart and your mind. And when you get to that point, that is the most freeing place to be in. Where nothing anybody says, because you are so secure. And this is the reason why, in a little bit sidebar, we have to teach our girls young of who they are. Tell your daughters, 
you're beautiful. Tell your daughter you're intelligent. You're so smart, my little genius. My daughter, she's 17, but I've been calling her little mama and moody because her mood sometimes, goodness, since she's little. And I always tell her, you're so beautiful. Look at my girl, so pretty anime girl. She loves anime. Tell her she's so beautiful. Tell her how smart she is. She's a genius. I've been saying these things to her all the time. I address my son as sir and tell him how handsome he is. Look, my boy, I know you got it. You got it. He's been hearing these things since he was young. The reason why we need to do this as mothers and as feminine influences in the lives of our children, but specifically girls, the more they hear it from their mothers and the mother figures and the aunties and cousins and the close family in their life, the less they will be impacted when some crazy person or some hater or jealous person comes to them and says, oh, you're ugly. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. Oh, you think you know this. You don't know that. They've been hearing it so much so that it becomes true for them. Let's say, look, as mothers, sometimes our children do some crazy things and you wonder what happened. But even so, you don't call your children derogatory names. You build them up. The world is going to do enough of that. And I think the more we do that, the more confident they will be. My father, I tell you, he set the standard with nobody messes with my children. I'm not going to get into the whole details, but my father set a precedent where we could do anything we wanted to do. And it's like, I dare somebody to say something. Now, not in a negative way. My father was from the old school. He grew up in the 50s, 60s, 70s. So not in a negative way we can do anything. But it was like that respect of like knowing that we are somebody. Don't let anybody take, adv take advantage of you. My father, he was from the old school. He would always say, and he's still here. So he is from the old school. He would say, you got to work twice as hard. Don't let nobody do this. Don't let nobody do that. You know, and while that was very masculine instruction, but as a woman... More so I lean into my femininity. I still carry those lessons with me. And that's where that queen energy comes in of knowing who you are and spiritually who you belong to so that nobody can come along and try to make you feel any less than what you are. So we as parents, my point of saying this, build our girls up early. Tell them how beautiful they are. Tell your daughter how beautiful she is, how pretty she is, how talented, all of that. So when she gets out here in the world, nobody, they might say it, but it's not going to penetrate her heart and her spirit. That was just my little spiel on that, okay? But use them jealous people as motivation, all right? If you watch this video until the very end, put the high heel emoji in the comment section. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your feedback. The more the channel grows, the more comments I get and it's harder to keep up with. So I try to look through, but I see what you all are saying. And when I look at that, I say, thank God. And thank God for the lurkers also, because there's a lot of people. I think there's like 55% of people who are subscribed and like 40 something percent that are not. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Like, I don't know what you're waiting for, but hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you watching as well. And use those haters as motivation in your life to boost your confidence and to keep you focused on becoming the woman you want to become. All right. Take care.